going to emphasize a little bit more on the Python code itself. Um, yesterday, if you have uh, joined yesterday, uh, yesterday we have full uh, viewed like some of the uh, nice capabilities um, in uh, Python. And however, we did not emphasize much on the code itself. So uh, in this session, I will show you a couple of more solutions. Uh, plus, I will show you some code as well. So hopefully you are excited to see the code. And uh, this is just for you to be, so this is just uh, to prove that uh, Python is very easy and it's uh, very intuitive. And uh, last year and the beginning of this year, we had two different uh, levels of uh, Python training. The second Python training that we had, it was like a bit advanced. Uh, however, the people that joined the second course, the advanced course, they did have zero knowledge in Python. And uh, they have benefited from Python and they are currently uh, using it in their workspace. So uh, it's very nice to, to have Python or work with Python. So um, let me show you a library that you can use in Python to read log files. I will show you a couple of uh, code examples, and then I will show you like uh, what you can do to it and how to link it to graphical user interface. So uh, hopefully my screen is visible, plus my audio or my sound is audible. Uh, if yes, please so write in the chat box so we can go ahead and start um, today's session. So uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I will delete this code and I will just click on this plus code. Plus code meaning that you want to add a code block that you want to write. For example, uh, since we are trying to work with uh, log files or the last files, uh, to be more precise, um, for the people who do not know what a last file is, you can go ahead in Google and search for last files, and it will show you tons of information. Basically, a last file in oil and gas industry, specifically upstream oil and gas industry, actually is a data file. It's ASCII data file that's related to the well logs. Uh, well logs are the log jobs that are conducted in a well uh, to, cal uh, to calculate different parameters uh, like porosity, permeability, the water saturation, and um, a lot of things. Um, reservoir engineers, they do know that it's a bit hard to work with last files because last file readers do not exist out there. It's mostly commercial uh, commercial softwares that read these types of files. And luckily in Python, we have a free library. It's called Lazio. And this library is actually, it's very mature library. You can count on it. And it's very, very uh, exciting library. And uh, we usually we cover this library like in two days uh, in the full training. So the participant will have like the good knowledge how to handle um, different last files and how to handle different plot types and uh, ultimately perform calculations. So let me just show you the library. So the library is called Lazio. So if you type Lazio in Google and then last reader, so you you will basically you have like multiple um, search uh, queries. So I want you to go to to the one that says the PyPy. As we um, explained yesterday, PyPy is actually is the packaging website for uh, different Python libraries. So basically, all the libraries that you need in Python, you will find in this uh, website. So you can see this is the basic description of the Lazio and when it was last updated and how many downloads it has and stuff like this. Plus, it shows you like example codes, how to read last files and stuff like this. If you if you are not comfortable with reading this small documentation, you need something in details, then um, it's your lucky day. Uh, you can go ahead to the actually to the full documentation for this library by going to um, this home page. The home page will drive you to something called GitHub. GitHub basically is a website that is hosting the source files for that specific library. 
you can find all the descriptions and stuff like this. By the way, even you can go ahead and download the source file for this library and you can modify it by the way and make it yours. So that's the beauty of Python. Everything is open source and everything is modifiable. So if you go ahead to the documentation, you will find that um, different sections in the documentations occur. Uh, you can navigate the documentation. It's talking about like different aspects of uh, handling last files. So this documentation is actually is pretty good. I've gone through it like multiple times. And um, it's a good reference to have whenever you're working with uh, well log files. So without further ado, let's go ahead and try to load a log file. So uh, the first thing you need is actually you need a library that can handle um, log files or the last files. So um, the library is called Lazio. I have already installed it on my computer, so I don't need to install it again. And if you do not have it or you have downloaded uh, Python, you do not have Lazio, it's, the installation is uh, pretty simple. You can just um, uh, type pip install and then the library name. Uh, of course, this is this will be go in the command prompt. And uh, once you download that, which, which, which will take like less than a minute, uh, what I want you to do is you will type import. Import meaning in Python is, is just um, whenever you type the keyword import, meaning that you want to import um, libraries that are not native to Python. Uh, because you can see, Python can have two types of libraries. The first library is, is called standard library or the core library. Uh, this library is 100% developed by the uh, guys at Python. And however, we have like the 99.9% .9 of library, which is known as third party libraries. Libraries that are created pe from uh, people like you and me, and then we share it on the internet for free. So this is known as community or third party libraries and Lazio like uh, most of Python libraries are of this type. So you will type import Lazio and believe it or not, that's it. That's all you need to start working with uh, last files. So the second thing we need is we need to actually open the file itself. So how can we open the file? We will type the library name like this Lazio and then we will put a dot. Whenever you put a dot in Python, meaning that you want to access sub functionalities that's existing in Lazio. For example, let me just um, break this down for you. For example, if you have a car like this, the car can have different objects in real life. A car can have doors, it can have windows, it can have bonnet, it can have trunk, it can have tires, it can have multiple things. So if you want to access specific things in your car, in programming languages, we will write a dot and then the component name. For example, I want to access the tires. Or maybe maybe in your car, you want to access, uh, you want to access the uh, color of the car. So this is, this is known as the property and this is the object or the class itself. So this is basically um, how Python and most programming languages um, handle these types of things. However, if you did not grasp it, uh, please do not worry. And uh, the concept is pretty simple. You can just go ahead and uh, uh, Google how um, basically Python works and you, know, you will get it in a minute. So Lazio, uh, Lazio provides us with a uh, function that's really, really, really easy to use. And whenever you use that function, actually it opens up the file for you. So the function is lazio.read. So the read actually, it will read the last file for you. Inside the parentheses of the read, you will provide the file name. Um, the file name actually you have to put or you have to add the file name to the same place um, uh, your files exist in at, or you can just reference to the path of it. So for simplicity, I have included the last file in uh, the same directory I'm working in. The file is called caliper.last. So this is the file. You can double click on the file you can see all the information that's related to the file itself. For example, you have the starting depth, stopping depth, and the increments, uh, the well name, the location, and different types of curve that it's having. So basically, this is a last file. You can see last file 
is structured in a specific way. However, it's not that easy to read like in softwares like Excel or something like this. You have to manually copy and paste it. Luckily in Python, we don't have to do that. We can work with multiple last files. We can have like 10 last files open at the same time. So Python actually is providing a great service uh, for us by providing this library, Lazio. So I will add the, uh, the last file name, which is caliper dot last and believe it or not you will run the file like this um, wait for it to connect by the way this is just only a single time thing once it connects uh, now you will have a full-fledged last file open in your device and that last file that you have opened in python you can do multiple things with it for example you can do calculations with it you can use different tracks for different types of plotting. You can have, or you can output multiple plots and you can do basically lots and lots of things with the last files. So let me just run this again. It will just take a couple of seconds to load. Um, meanwhile, let me just show you a solution that I've already prepared where I am plotting multiple uh, tracks or last files that I have already opened. So let me just show you this. So basically, this is a Lazio software or Lazio um, based software that I have created in Python. Basically, what I am doing, I am opening that last file, which is called the caliber.las. And then I am selecting all the variables or all the tracks I want to display. For example, um, I am displaying the caliper log, the density, the gamma ray, and the sonic log if you do not want to display anything you can just click on this clear all once you clear everything all the files uh, sorry all the tracks will disappear so uh, you can go ahead again and select all the tracks that are relevant to your work for example you can select caliber you can select gamma ray and you can select for example you can select density as well so you can select all of these things uh, to be plotted in, uh, in the application itself. So let me just show you the code that's doing this thing. So let me just save this in a call it last equals to this one. So basically the software that you have saw it's actually, it's, uh, to be honest, it's under 20 lines of code. It's exactly um, 17 lines of code. Um, where I am doing is, what I am doing is, is I am using Streamlit uh, to create all the graphical user components. Plus, I am using Pandas and Lazio. And then I'm using something, something called Plotly. Plotly is this, just the library that we use. Uh, to, in order to create those graphs in Python. And then I am opening the file and then I am just uh, plotting everything. Uh, by the way, you can create um, calculated tracks or calculated variables based on your last file. So let me show you how you can do that. For example, uh, what we usually do, we petroleum engineers and petrophysicists, we use the gamma ray reading. Gamma ray reading, by the way, is the indication of having shale or having like specific type of uh, um, salts and uh, minerals in your uh, clay. So this is just an indication of uh, the quality of the formation and stuff like this. So you can use the gamma ray actually to calculate the volume of the clay or the volume of the shale. Um, this is one of the simplest things you can do but more uh, complex calculations are possible as well. So let me show you how to create a new calculation. The calculation will be based on this last file. 
So let me write last, and then you open and close these brackets. These brackets means that you want to create um, new track or new variable that did not existed before. For example, uh, the variable name is going to be V shell, which is the volume of the clay in our formation. Uh, by the way, this is going to be calculated with depth. So this is going to be viewed as a uh, last file track as well. So in order to calculate, um, the shale volume, the shale volume is pretty simple to calculate. Let me just um, uh, bring up my paint application so I can write the equation for you. So uh, the volume of shale uh, can be calculated based on this equation. So the maximum shale reading, so this is the maximum reading, minus the log reading itself from the last. So it's divided by the maximum reading minus the minimum reading. So basically, these are uh, all things you have to have. So basically, you have three inputs, which is the log itself, which is the gamma ray, and the maximum and the minimum. Uh, if we were talking about something else like uh, Excel and other programming languages, this might be been a bit more challenge to do. However, in Python, it's very simple. You can calculate the minimum and the maximum with a single line of code. So let me show you how you can do that. So. I will type something like minimum gamma ray equals to last the name of the track, which is gamma ray. And then I will write dot, dot meaning I want to access uh, sub functionalities. And then I will type minimum. And that's it. It will calculate the minimum for you. So we will do the same. I will copy and paste it. I will do the same for the maximum. So I will type max like this and then gamma ray, and then I will change the function from min to max. Now I have two things. The only thing remaining is the log itself. So let's go ahead and type the equation. So the equation is going to be less the reading of the gamma ray subtracted from the minimum gamma ray that we have just calculated. It's divided by by the way, it's best to use uh, parentheses. So uh, divided by the maximum gamma ray minus the minimum gamma ray. And that's it. Let me just include this as well, like this. And everything should be inside the parentheses. By the way, you can separate your lines by empty spaces. So uh, it will get give a more visibility and more reading to your uh, code. And that's it. Let me save everything by control S on my keyboard. And uh, the application, the log application should update itself. Once it updates itself, you can see a new track has been added, which is the V shell. So let's go ahead and plot a few variables. So I will plot caliber, the density, the gamma ray, and then next to it, I will plot the V shell. The V shell it is already calculated based on the gamma ray. You can see they have both the same signature. However, they have different values. Uh, the visual actually, um, it's ranging from zero to one because it's, it's just a linear ratio. However, we can change that. We can change it to display in percentages. So let's go ahead and do that. So I will multiply this equation by 100. This will convert the visual into percentages. What I can do is, I can just add a percentage next to the name of the track itself. So the user will know that the V shell is now actually in percentage. So you can see it's already reflected. So let's plot caliber, density, gamma ray, and V shell. So you can see now the V shell actually it's uh, displaying in, uh, in percentages. So let's go ahead and uh, zoom to a specific uh, portion of the log itself. Um, you can see the specific portion in the log. Uh, we have low shale volume, which is like six or 7%. This is a good indication that um, this is a formation or this is a um, reservoir. And uh, basically the shale volume is one of, <coughs> sorry, uh, the gamma ray and the shale volume is basically one of the um, indicators of uh, having a hydrocarbon accumulation or a possible hydrocarbon accumulation in the world book. So basically, this is the first use cases of Lazio. By the way, you can use it to create a more complex calculations. 
and if you have like the proper um, scientific knowledge of how to create um, calculations in petrophysics. You can do um, a lot of a uh, lot of customization with this application. For example, you can see uh, this application actually, and uh, the 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 width and the height of this application is fixed. Um, no matter uh, how much how many times I reload the application, uh, the width and the height is going to be the same because the width and the height is actually is fixed inside the code, or it's we call it it's hard coded, meaning that you cannot change it in the runtime. But luckily. Python and Streamlit provides us such functionality to do so. So what I need to do is I need to create two buttons. The first button is going to be the width of the well log and the second one is going to be the height of the well log. So it will change the proportions of it. So let's go ahead and create um, two, uh, uh, two more buttons uh, that will do so. So you can see the height and the width of the plot is fixed or it's hard coded in line 20. Uh, I know there might be some, uh, most of the lines that you do not understand, but basically um, once you have uh, a proper training, you will understand all of this and much, much more. So basically what I need to do is we need to expose the width and the height inside a specific uh, uh, text boxes. So let's go ahead and do that. So I will create a variable. It's called um, width underscore button equals to like a specific uh, um, uh, a specific graphical user interface component, which is streamlit dot sidebar, meaning that I want to put it on the sidebar dot uh, number underscore input. Number input actually is um, the input for the numerical values. So I will type the message, which is going to be the width, and then the value of it, which is going to be a thousand, for example. Uh, I will copy this and convert this to height, like this, height, and then I will change the message as well, height. So I will put the height as eight hundred. Now you have, now you have might already guessed that we need to change these from hard coded to the variables that we have created. And you are correct. So we will change this to width underscore button. And just be patient. I am promising you that's going to be rewarding. And then height underscore button and save everything. Let's go ahead and view our application. Now you can see we are having two new buttons. So how much it took us to create two new buttons? I think like one minute or something. So now the width and the height, actually this is, um, this is adjustable. The user can adjust it. For example, let's change the height from 800 to 1500. And then we press enter. Now you can see the proportions or the aspect of the world log have changed. So let's change it to 3000 and press enter. Now you can see the log file changed uh, its shape again. You can make it uh, wider. For example, let's make it 2000 and press enter now you can see um the well log file is actually it's taking your uh, your full place and uh, you can just uh, minimize this to 200 by 200 so now you can uh, give the user the capability actually to um so it says that it cannot be less than a thousand okay so let's uh, move it back to thousand there we go and uh, now it's everything is back to normal or at least uh, what it seems to be. Now, this is uh, the first um, uh, use case. By the way, you can add lots and lots of functionalities to this. You can add like multiple graphs. You can add cross plots. You can do lots and lots of things. And for example, I will show you how to create a cross plot between the gamma ray and the shale volume. I know this is not the best cross plot you can do, but I'm just trying to prove a concept for you. So the cross plot will be in here. A cross plot basically is, is uh, two variables that are plotted on the X and the Y axis as a scatter plot. And then this, uh, this cross plot will actually will show you the relationship between those two variables. So how can we do this? So let's try to create a cross plot First, we will create something called um, uh, plotly chart. So plotly.xpress as px. So this is just um, 
a charting library, which is used to create fast chart charts. So I will create uh, something called cross plot equals to, uh, for example, um, px dot, uh, the cross plot is going to be scatter usually. So what you need to do is you need to provide um, the data and, uh, and other bunch of things. For example, um, let's go ahead and convert this to geo.scatter. Um, and then um, in the scatter, we will provide the x-axis, which is going to equal to the gamma ray, which is LAS gamma ray. And then we will provide the y-axis, which is going to be last v-shell that we have already calculated in the code above. So you can see the calculation is already can be included as a parameters in, in, in your code as well. So this is the scatter we have created. So let's go ahead and try to display this st.plotly. I'm sorry, st.plotly underscore chart. So let's display the cross underscore plot like this and give it a save, a nice save. Once you save it, it should start appearing. And yeah, we are having a mistype. So plotly. So let's see where we have, yeah, plotly. Save it again, and let's wait for it to load. And uh, yeah, it's giving you an error. So the figure of data dictionary like instance of grad object figure. So yeah, um, basically it's giving me error because I am not uh, get giving it a like a complete uh, plot or something like this. So geo dot figure. So let's try this one and save it. And there we go. Now we have our class plot. Let me just change it uh, or display more uh, plots, gamma ray and uh, shale volume. And there we go. Now you have your log on the top and the cross plot on the bottom. You can see the cross plot is already showing a linear relationship between the gamma ray and the V-shell. This is something expected because uh, the V-shell actually is derived from the gamma ray. Uh, by the way, whenever you're trying to do cross plots in the petrophysics or the, in the well logs, you usually try to um, plot two different variables that are actually, they are not related to the same reading. So once you do that, you will get like a nice relationship between those uh, variables. So this is the first use case. So let me just show you the second use case, which is one of the use cases I really love. Uh, so basically, whenever you have um, wells or fields, they, ha they are declining in production. So if you plot um, that uh, the flow rate, or the rate of the production with time, you can see the wells or like different um, oil and gas assets, they experience different types of uh, pressure drop, uh, sorry, uh, different types of production drop in a specific order in a given field. Uh, usually the prediction on how much the rate is going to drop, this is known as decline curve analysis. It's a very well known, and um, very um, widely used method in oil and gas industry, especially in reservoir engineering. So basically you have to calculate this line that best represents your production drop. So let me show you the equation that you can use in order to create uh, this calculation. Oh, sorry, let me go back. Yeah, there we go. Um, this is... This is an application I have created using Python. Basically what it does is it's actually, it's pulling um, hundreds of wells from a specific files. These uh, wells, they have production data and things like this, like pressure and stuff like this. So basically you need to solve this equation. So in order to calculate uh, the flow rate on the left-hand side, 
which is the flow rate, which is Q at specific time, you need to know the initial flow rate, the initial flow rate of the flow time. So this is going to be the rate at the, um, the, the first uh, few days in the well's life. Plus, you need to know something called B, which is the decline rate or the decline exponent. Plus, you need to know something called DI, which is how much your field is declining. So you can see you have three parameters, which is usually unknown. So in order to calculate an equation with three unknown parameters, you can see that's a pain. However, luckily, Python, to the rescue, Python provides you a library called... Um, um, uh, the library is called SciPy. SciPy is, provides uh, like scientific calculations, I think like this. And it's basically, it can solve these types of equation based on trial and errors and minimizing the errors during the calculation. So let me show you one thing. So what we usually do is we select a well. And once we select a well, uh, you have uh, three, dis uh, three different parts in this plot. So these dots are, these are the calculations, or sorry, these are the, the actual uh, flow rate measurements from our field. The second thing is this light blue line, which is the model fit, which is something that Python have calculated and fitted in our data. So this is only the half part of the solution. So the next part and the most important part in the solution comes when, when you need to predict the future production. For example, I am predicting the, uh, the future production for almost like um, four years, which is represented by this red line. By the way, these parameters are different for each and every well. This is what makes this task very daunting. However, if you create such a solution with Python, Python will take care of everything for you. For example, whenever you change the well name, all of these parameters, which are uh, calculated based on trial and errors, Python is doing this for you. For example, QI is usually unknown. The DI is unknown. The B is unknown as well. Python have calculated these three things for me. The only thing I need to provide is uh, how long do you, for the prediction I want to be. For example, I can make the prediction up to 1,200 days. Uh, so if you click on enter, you can see the prediction area has... Uh, just uh, boosted itself. So you can see the final, uh, the well rate is going to be six to one barrels per day. I don't know if that's economical or not, uh, but uh, this is what the prediction is giving us. So you can change those well names and every parameter will change with these uh, wells as well, depending on the uh, equations, uh, uh, sorry, depending on the how the equation is being solved and different parts of uh, of uh, the equation itself and how it's, how it's being calculated. So you can see different wells will have different trends and different signatures. You can see some wells are fitted better than other wells, but the great part is you can program your application in such a way, and not only you will retrieve the best solution based on Python, actually you can adjust the solution as well. For example, Python have calculated the initial rate for me during the initial life of the well to be uh, 155 barrels. However, I can change this to 160 and check the solution for the equation by clicking on enter. You can see now the line have deviated a little bit. Uh, we can change the B as well. This is, by the way, this is the optimum B that Python have calculated. We can change it to three or something like just to prove the concept. You can see now uh, the equation have deviated a lot. Uh, you can just uh, put everything back by just refreshing the well itself. For example, um, we let's change the QI in this well from 173 to like 300 or something. So you can see the line is not fitted anymore. So basically this is uh, how to create the client curve analysis. Let me walk you through the code that is doing all the heavy lifting for the decline curve analysis. So basically, um, what we are doing in here is basically we're importing all the same libraries that you have already saw, plus additionally one new library called SciPy. SciPy is just to create like uh, solutions for our equation. You have those uh, functions that's calculating uh, decline curve analysis. 
I would not go through them. Plus you have a portion where we are pulling the data and then uh, we're converting our production to like daily production or something like this. And then we are providing a user to select like a uh, list of wells and uh, other similar inputs. Uh, plus one, once we do all that, we actually, you are using the curve fitting method to calculate the best parameters. Once we get all those parameters, we display them in these three lines. And then we go ahead and plot them and make the user uh, the, or give the user the control to like change um, different uh, aspects of the uh, plot itself. By the way, um, this is one of the simplest uh, methods to calculate or uh, to perform decline curve analysis. There are more complex methods and they are, by the way, they are not hard to program in Python. Um, I know some companies that uh, rely solely on Python to uh, create decline curve analysis because they are relying on such um, calculation uh, libraries. And by the way, you can just create PDF reports doing this, or you can just create an Excel sheet report. So you can do lots and lots of things uh, with this uh, type of software. So, uh, and uh, actually we have uh, reached the end of our webinar. Um, Python is just, uh, it's just a big playground for engineers and specialists. You can use Python to virtually make anything you want. If you can realize it, probably you can do it in Python. So I will recommend you to learn Python, uh, but you have to learn it in a proper way. If you do not learn Python in a proper way, two things will happen. First, you will waste your time. And second, you will not gain the enough knowledge to start to work on your own. So uh, thank you all for uh, listening and attending this, uh, this two-day webinar. So uh, please, if you have any questions,